what do you get when you cross a know-it-all newspaper columnist with an awkward, unsophisticated everyman? Yeah, uh, well, I'm just not sure about that right now. Welcome to Couch and the Room. Welcome to Couch in the Room, presented by Pure Options, precision crafted cannabis with locations in Lansing, Detroit, Muskegon, and Mount Pleasant. Pure Options is your one stop shop for all things cannabis. If quality means something to you, if price means something to you, if the best experience means something to you, Pure Options is your place. Go to pureoptions.com today. And when you go to a Pure Options, mention Couch in the Roof. And if you spend $50 or more, you get a free 8th of Pro Grow with your purchase. Our Saturday morning show, also presented by our friends at Firekeepers Casino and Firekeepers Eye Casino and Sportsbook app. Download the app today. Bet the NCAA tournament games. Enjoy the props. Enjoy the sign-up bonuses. Enjoy the user experience. Or just swing on down to Firekeepers Casino near Battle Creek off I-94 and Daisy's Tap Room and Sportsbook for the in-person sportsbook experience, which is uh, just a really cool thing and fun thing to do. Jason, how you doing, brother? I am never going to financially recover from this. Cockburn. Hey, what's up, buddy? How you been, man? I- I'm good, you know? I like Charlotte. I like, yeah. I like this area. Yeah. I can live here. When you when you guys have snow, and even when it's 60 and rainy, I'll take this. You weren't bummed at all that the women's team uh, lost yesterday, huh? or whenever they played. So now you so don't have to little, cover both. Little torn. Um, <laughs> they're they're a good story. I really like their team. I like watching them play this year. Like they've been a really fun. And I wanted to see them play South Carolina. I know it wasn't going to go well. You know they probably get hammered pretty good. But I wanted to sort of see the contrast and and have them see sort of the top, top, top level of their sport and, you know, and, and then know the level they've got to get to. And I, so that experience I wanted. Don't mind going home Sunday a little bit um, because uh, next week I'll either be on the way to Los Angeles for the men's basketball team or probably Sioux Falls, South Dakota is the most likely venue for MSU hockey. So Tuesday I'll be headed one way or another Tuesday night uh, to one of those places. So, um yeah, I, I don't mind getting a couple couple days at home too. But uh, yeah, it's been fun. It, and, and obviously Thursday's game was I, Jason. I was going to ask you this: like, in terms of vibe changing, would you say what happened Thursday was second only to the Baylor game and that dismantling? Like, in terms of just everybody yeah. sort of thinking differently and having some hope all of a sudden. Well, yeah, it was different points in the season, obviously. But yeah, that that victory. On Thursday, it just kind of proved the the fans' point, though. Of we knew that this team team could play well if they played together and hit some shots. It's just like, where has this been? That was the only concern. It's like, God damn, all of you guys are playing really well and shooting the ball well. And I understand you got to hit shots to win some of these games, but some of the dumb turnovers and mistakes, you just didn't really see any of that. So I just think that the fan base now, you know, North Carolina, obviously next today, and we know what goes on when we play North Carolina. But I just. It definitely had to give the players some sort of swagger back, Izzo a little bit of swagger, because that was just, from top to bottom, one of the best played games that they played, obviously since the Baylor game, but maybe all season. Yeah, and I think the thing that has to give people a little bit of hope is that it was it's sort of two and a half straight games now. It's not like this performance popped out of nowhere, and that would still be better than not popping out of nowhere, but they played really well against Purdue. I think a better team than North Carolina. The second half against Minnesota was really good. Like there seems to be a focus and edge to them, um, and and guys really wanting you know. And, and it it does raise the question, and we'll get into this in the Groovy Donut Twitter questions uh, momentarily. Is like, <laughs> why can't you do that more often? These these are all seventy five percent of the time. That's all. I mean, you know what? We can't have a perfect <laughs> season. One hundred percent would be stupid to ask. But it's just. And Izzo has to understand that, right? I mean, he knows that rational fans will sit there and they're not going to say that fire Izzo. But there was times, I don't care what anybody says, you're like, man, has the game passed Izzo by? And it's because of games like on Thursday where you're going like, Jesus, man. That's how your team yeah. should have been playing a majority of the season. Yeah, no, I mean, that's I, – I think that is what's – people are relishing the moment, but there's a sense of like, 
if that's who you are, where is that? You right. know, and and I don't. And it's also um, playing North Carolina in the next game where you haven't had much success, even though this isn't one of the better North Carolina teams. But you just see that North Carolina logo, and you're like, oh, you think of 2009? At least I do. Yes, and it's not a bad North Carolina team. It's not the one that missed the tournament last year for sure. Um, yeah, we don't usually do like a Saturday show or a show. I shouldn't say this. We've done a couple Saturday shows, but shows the day of a game later tonight. And we just we thought, you know, I know that the download times are probably limited for some people, but like <laughs> I think there's uh, – we, well, we promised a show and then d- didn't deliver two straight nights, and that's on me. Um, and so we wanted to give you guys something to – just to pregame with, you know, as your uh, – as your you know, digesting it's not, your groovy donuts. It's and, not fair uh, to do to me. Options. It's not fair to do to me when I've had some pure options, and all of a sudden, Graham texts me. He goes, "Just finished the Twitter questions. I'll be down there in a minute, or I'll be ready to go in a minute." And I'm like, "I'm sitting in the chair. I just smoked a joint." I'm like, "Wait, what? We're doing it tonight?" And I had to like look back because listen, I I know myself, and I know that could have been my fault. But I look back. I go, "No, we agreed on to on Friday, but we didn't do it then either." But just uh, yeah, it was weird because. We were texting, and I was on a deadline, so I'm, I'm, I'm harried. I got like seven different things going at once, and I somehow misread it as we were going tonight uh, on good. Thursday, and, uh, and and screwed that up. And so I, just, I was all set to go. I was like, yeah. and uh, and then yesterday I screwed up because I just miss. I was in South Carolina and uh, just misjudged how good. long it was going to take. So I just didn't want people. I, I'm irresponsible, but not that irresponsible. I know when to shut down the the uh, MG intake if we're doing a show later in the evening uh, but if we're not doing a show i'm token up for sure no I, it's a half I, hour I drive too i rubed it you didn't rub it so that, that's we're, we're we're it's fun with that we're happens. uh we're good to go there yeah no it's been it's been fun look there's been a good tournament um kentucky losing to oakland oakland uh, that's a great story that's fun the best uh that game's saturday night too uh you know msu hockey is saturday night too that's a, a big uh deal game against michigan i'm glad those games don't intersect uh, so people can watch both of them, uh, Michigan, Michigan State hockey at eight on Big Big Ten Network, and then I, I feel a little bad that the G- MSU gymnastics team though is going off at like five thirty in the Big Ten championships at Jenison right when the the men are going or five fifteen. That 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 stinks a little bit. Um, you know, hopefully there's enough audience for everybody, and and I. Uh, I, I just wish there was more consideration for that, but I, I understand. That, look, when you're good, these, these are problems to have if you're Michigan State. If you got a lot going on, uh, it could you know it it could be a whole a whole lot worse. Um, before we dig into these groovy donut Twitter questions, uh, reminder. Uh, well, I don't know. Reminder: If you're either in the uh, Midtown Brewing Company Couch in the Room 2024 bracket challenge at this point or not, my wife is in fourth place. I, I don't. I don't understand how that happens. Um, Did you help her out? No. I, I didn't even know she was entering. And uh, I'm like in 271st. I think you're in 64. I, it's, it's, I don't know where. I, yeah. Thanks, I UAB. I'm always down. Yeah. Man. I, Losing a final UAB four team not, already. T- yeah. I <laughs> love that Ouch. you were so big on UAB and they're gone after round one. That's, well, I wasn't too big on it, but it's a gut feel. And we always say gut feels. You got to go with it. And it's not, you know. Yeah, it wasn't the best pick, and especially in that region, kind of dumb. But. It's a it's it's a baked feel. It's a pure options, <laughs> uh, pure yeah. options, baked uh, baked feel uh, for sure. Uh, and uh, uh, you know, I would, our sponsors fit us uh, for a lot of reasons. And I would tell people, uh, you know, if you if you're a little nervous about tonight, there's plenty of time to get to pure options. Uh, check them out. Make them part of your Saturday. Uh, have uh, have pure options ready to go in case Michigan State doesn't go well. Box of Groovy Donuts, they're open till 1 p.m. on Saturdays, 7 a.m. to 1, either location, Lake Lansing Road and in Williamston, open on Sundays as well, uh, Thursday through Sunday. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, I was also decked out decked out in uh, my Muskox flannel last night, uh, having a drink uh, in, in Charlotte, letting the people here know, like, this is how we roll in Michigan. This is how this is what a good-looking man looks like. So, <laughs> this that's is how uh, we roll you know, in Michigan. Yeah. There's <laughs> wow, there it is. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Um, all right, uh, should we uh, should we dive into um, – and by the way, if, if you're looking for a place to watch the games today, uh, you know, Midtown Brewing Company is – I think those of you who are there, the live show, understand the setup there. It, it is a great, chill vibe, and it's not built to be a sports bar on its own because it's a great date place and great got lots of character, but they've really done nice things with their TV setup. They'll have the games on um, and, uh, you know, good uh, – you know, 
good, uh, great menu and uh, good beer selection, including the American Stout. That's 402 South Washington Avenue in downtown Lansing. Uh, support the people, support us, and we appreciate uh, we appreciate you f- for doing it. Um, all right, you ready to dig into these groovy donut Twitter questions? Yeah, man, let's do it. Uh, Dominic up first. Why are we fucking like this? Where has this type of team been, and where will it be the next time it's not? Jesus, even Mahdi had purpose. Jackson Kohler played well, too. You hear that, Papa Kohler? He, he played well. Yeah, no, I, I – uh, uh, I saw that uh, Jeff Kohler replied to Dominic, so <laughs> I'm going to leave that alone with that. Um, and uh, anyway, um, yeah, I mean, it, it, it's a good question, and it's a, it's a fair question. I think the best answer I have for it is, number one, some players just, you know, college basketball is hard. Some guys are where they are in their development, and a guy like Jay Nakins who makes such a difference. When he shoots like that, and he hasn't always been able to shoot like that, and his game's still developing, and I still think there's a lot he, next year he could be as a sort of potential headliner. You know, and, and sometimes he lets his defense get dictated by his offense, but when he is that guy, he changes them. When their big guys are, are – and I think those guys have developed. Jackson Kohler's, uh, you know, I had people sitting next to me commenting on his play. So Soko obviously had a great day. Um, the, the bounce pass from – Backdoor bounce pass from Carson Cooper was, you know, those those are all signs of development. So that's stuff that's happening in house. And but then there's Hogard, and I think Hogard is Hogard's floor game was tremendous. Um, he was just really really good. And why he can't be that more often? I think part of it is uh, he's not quite good enough to just take over a game at will. And he, but I think there's some games where he's just not quite as dialed in. And uh, he is this time of year. He's built for this tournament. Next one from Dominic Graham. Do you want to be alone with Matt Painter? We can all step outside and let you guys have a moment. Holy shit, bro. The more you push that bizarre agenda, the more I want them to once again get a fairly dick in the ass. I, yeah, I'm sorry, Dominic. We just disagree. For whatever reason, I have a uh, – I don't want to say a thing for Matt Painter, um, but I, he I makes have a you soft look spot fit. for well, – He makes you look bit. like you're in good shape. Yeah, especially when I'm wearing a muskox. But the um, yeah, I w- I would say this, I, I it is something about their story, the tortured nature of what's happened to that program over time, and just coming up short. And I just feel for them. And whatever it is, they take a lot of shit. And and I, I don't I don't know what it is, but that's that's why. It, I mean I I don't. And I also I mean I like Matt Painter. I've had good conversations with him over the time. So yeah, it's how it's like with Jim Delaney, who I don't like as much. And people who, Jim Harbaugh, who I didn't like the way he treated people. Like, how you treat me, how you treat the people around me when I'm around you matters. I was upset with Matt Painter the way he treated the media on senior night when he made people wait like an hour and a half for the post-game interview. People were leaving. People were on deadline. That annoyed me. But most of my dealings with him have been good. Uh, Last one from Dominic. Graham, what's the deal with the Illinois Cuddles, too? Every year you have an uh, Illini Futures and have them making a deep run. Tom Snyder's not walking through that dorm room door enough. I love the attention to detail here. Um, yeah, you know what? It's just, you're right, Illinois is a team that fools you because it looks like they have the goods, right? I mean, and and sometimes they don't. There's a little bit of a Brad Underwood issue perhaps there. We'll see. Um, they're not. Uh, uh, it's interesting because, you know, we talk about matchup proof and matchup dependent and all that stuff. Illinois is is in some ways more matchup proof than a lot of teams, but they all, they don't have great shooting. That has nothing to do with the matchup. So if they don't hit shots, they can be in trouble. And I and, and you're right, I don't trust them entirely, but I think they've got a lot of talent. Travis Mater next. Sanford had a foul called on one of the cleanest, most incredible blocks I've ever seen. History making type play, clearly clean upon just a second of replay. Tell me why that in 2024 we don't have a system to fix this in seconds. Coach's challenge, booth review. So what did you think of it? Did you see this this play where I did the not block see from a behind? Yeah, I saw the highlight yeah. of it. It's ridiculous. There's a couple of those plays yesterday where the refs, the refs in the Mississippi State game for Michigan State, I felt that they let them play. Yesterday, it was just kind of like they were letting them play like 90s basketball in the NBA, and then all of a sudden, the second half, they would call ticky-tack, which drives me absolutely nuts. So college refs are still ass is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, no, it, it's um, 
It, it sucks that they don't have something. It's too much goes into these. Like I understand there are lots of calls throughout a game that matter, but in the final two minutes of a game, you either ought to be able to review everything, at least in the postseason, or you ought to have the opportunity to challenge uh, or whatever it might be. Because like, just too much goes into it. And that's a hard. You know, I, I hate when refs see things that didn't happen and anticipate things that didn't happen, and that's what this guy did, and that's a problem. But uh, yeah, it just seems like it's an easy fix for all the stuff we review. Let's review also things that really matter. Like this was consequent. Everybody talks, oh, I don't want the games to be longer. You know what? I'm willing to spend an extra 30 seconds on this game to get that call right. And the other thing is it would not have entirely fixed it for Sanford because he was on the ground, the guy who got blocked. Sanford would have been headed the other way with the ball. Like they would have been in transition. And if the whistle, once the whistle blew, they were going to lose some of the advantage anyway. So it wasn't going to be a full correction, but at least they would have had the ball. At least it would have been a, been a foul. Especially during the NCAA tournament, though, is when you can replay those things. You can have a committee that sits in a, in a boardroom, and when there's a, cha- a challenge call or something like that, maybe the, a, a towel challenge for coaches, and you can watch yeah. it within 30 seconds. You can see you overturn it. It should not take a whole thing where these refs have to get their headphones on and all this. No, have a committee ready to do it. I understand the refs can't get everything right. I understand that. But there's a common sense thing to it, Graham, where you and I could be sitting there and they could show us that play, and what would we do? We'd be, oh, yeah, that's a clean block. In 10 seconds, we need we would see the replay maybe three times and go, that's a clean block. Ch- uh, change that call. Yeah, it, it this was not a hard one. This is one where – and who knows? Maybe they'll, they'll – sometimes these moments happen and it changes the rule. Yeah. Uh, Travis Maynard and Gator with this one apparently. In this NIL era and with that, all that would come with the transfer to a rival, do you think Terrace Reed would reconsider MSU? Do you think Tom would consider a Wolverine he heavily recruited – do you think the players would accept it? Am I nuts for wanting uh, his big thighs on this team? Should always want big thighs on your team. Um, I'm not talking about Michigan. I don't think it would. Ha- yeah, I think. I think. Yeah, I don't think it happens in the Izzo era. I just don't. Um, the The thing I would want to see first is like an assistant coach, like the guy who would be the litmus test is a guy like Saudi Washington, whose dad was who's just passed away. Stan was a uh, Michigan State legend in the 60s, great player, and who grew up in Lansing and, you know, coached with Campy at Oakland and then has been on Beeline and, and uh, Jawan Howard's staffs. So, like, would he take somebody like that? I And, again, I'm not saying as the opening. I'm not saying that's the fit. I'm just – that's the sort of stuff I'd want to see first. I'd actually like to see Saudi Washington um, go back to Oakland where he was dominant as the coach in waiting under Campy and just be the guy there. I think that would be – uh, that would be uh, a, a tremendous deal. I would I would wish for that. Uh, I yeah I don't I I don't think um, and I don't know about Terrace Reed. I don't know what's on his mind. Players might be different, but I don't know that Izzo would would go there. I mean, no offense to the Oakland program, but Saudi Washington should really just go and wait for Greg Campy to retire. I mean, is it that coveted of a job? I know Campy makes three hundred grand, but do you want to follow a legend, especially all the pub he's getting now, which I absolutely love? But you don't want to follow Greg Campy there. Yeah, but he built that program with Campy. Like, he's responsible for a lot of it. Like, a, a lot of the pipeline they have, the Lansing pipeline especially, you know, I mean, he, Greg Campy isn't Greg Campy without Saudi Washington. So, sure. I, I, not in the Division One era. So, in that case, and, and they know each other well, and you would have to have a conversation like, how much longer are you going to do this? And if it's like five years, you may not do it. But if Campy's going to do it for a year or two, frankly, if I were Campy, I, I, there are two trains of thought. One, after this year, it will be fun to coach the next year. Like, people love you. There's some pressure off you. There's another side of me that thinks, man, this is the perfect walk-off. You just beat Kentucky, made the NCAA tournament. If you're gonna, if you're thinking about it in the next year or two, this is the time to say adios. Yeah, but Greg Campy's are rare. I mean, 40 years in the Horizon League and, and with Oakland, like a lot of – a lot of coaches don't they don't have that mindset. Like I'm going to stay and grow with this community and all that stuff. That's why it makes it so amazing that Campy's been doing it for so long. And I remember going to his basketball camps in '95. It's insane. He, he, yeah, and what's interesting is they were in the, on the forefront of, way before the transfer portal. They were recruiting kids they couldn't get, knowing those kids were going to transfer. I remember talking to Saudi Washington about this. He would say, "We look at a kid." We know we can't get out of high school. We're watching. We know he's making a bad decision on his initial place. He's not going to be happy there. We know it. And in two years, we'll have him. And they, they recruited that way just 
you know, building a program <laughs> on kids they were getting out of high school, but also kids they knew were going places they didn't think were great fits. Gator next. Why doesn't A.J. Hogard shoot more corner threes? He might be the best corner shooter on the team. The numbers just about bear this out. It's, it, it is something you're seeing more of. I was sitting next to Joe Rexrode, who everybody loves now. <laughs> um, I'm kidding, obviously. And when he A.J. took a corner three and Joe made a comment, I said, actually, that's like, He's like 50% or better. For, like, he's a really good corner th- three shooter. And sometimes you have an area that you, you're in a groove from. I, you know, um, I, I think you're seeing more of it. When when they do use other players with the ball in their hands at the top of the key, be it Walker or Aikens or Holloman with Hogard on the floor, you're seeing Hogard in that corner more. And, and I think they figured that out. Uh, Tom Lizzo up next. I love MSU in a matchup where the opposing team's best player is an undersized guard. Izzo better learn from last year and stick Jaden Akins on R.J. Davis from the start. Uh, Armando Bacot can have his. They just need to make sure uh, Comac doesn't get going from three. If MSU hits shots, they'll win. Yeah, I mean, there's some truth to this. You know, last year um, they they waited too long to move Akins on a Kansas State star player, and, and, and that he was really, really good. Um, I, you know, I don't, I don't, you know, I don't mind. Uh, they've got a lot of good defenders. I think you throw different bodies at them too. I don't think you have to go that way, but you do need to go earlier to Aikens if, if RJ Davis is starting to get going. Uh, Armando Bacat is, uh, yeah, it's not just about getting his though. It, it's, it's what he does on the glass. He's got the most amazing stat I got on the other day on him was six straight NCAA tournament games of 15 or more rebounds. That's impressive. Uh, Cormac, you know, he played at Notre Dame last year. They'll remember him because that game went poorly at Notre Dame. Uh, he's been shooting well, but they, they you know, uh, I think that that's a matchup for uh, for Hogard if, if if I were setting the uh, setting things up. Uh, Tyler, next, what was Jason's milligram count at the Jaden Aikens block and at the Aikens dunk? Wow, uh, not it wasn't. I mean, you got to understand it's. Watching the games all day, it's a it's a marathon, not a sprint. So I wasn't, I think, maybe 25 MGs. Because by the time 7 o'clock rolls around, you just, I don't know. You just got to, I just like a nice, smooth, nice buzz throughout the day when you're watching college hoops. You don't have to hammer it down, you know. But those were two fun plays to watch for sure. The, uh, yeah, I mean, you don't want to be, you want to wait till you know, we're mis- uh miscommunicating about a show before you're truly <laughs> truly baked that's really the uh the, there are times where i dose myself by accident and you know I'm like whoa wait what did i take but yeah as long as you're at home you're in good hands that's yeah. gonna happen no, and look i'm telling you right now that it's if you're nervous about tonight pure options is uh is, is here for you it's not not a bad way to go um to, to help uh take the edge off a little bit here um okay sorry about that. all right tyler watching grambling attack the rim yesterday would had me would have me nervous if i were a purdue fan not Graham. He's not nervous. Yeah, I'm all in. Yeah. No, I mean, Purdue's, you know, Purdue's beatable. I don't, be, I don't think they're unbeatable. It's just, I, uh, I hate they, The game I really want to see, I, I think they'll be fine until they get to the final eight. I want to see them against, like, a Tennessee. I think that's where it gets dicey. Uh, Tyler, why am I feeling like MSU-UNC is basically a toss-up, even the opening line was only UNC minus three and a half? Yeah, I mean, it, I think it's back to that on the the Firekeepers Eye Casino and Sportsbook. Like if you, uh, like if you think about that, and this is essentially a home game, a quasi home game, and the one seed is getting three and a half, or giving three and a half over a nine seed, like that's that tells you that Vegas thinks this is an even matchup. It probably tells you where some of the money is, but um, I don't think people trust Carolina entirely. But is it, you know you said it's almost like a home game. Is Vegas not taking? Any of that into account with that line? It's a good question. I yeah, it seems like they should, and it seems like they're probably getting at least like a point and a half or two. So, you know, they're UNC. They basically see as a point and a half or two better than MSU, which is pretty remarkable. Uh, TT up next. Does Izzo still promise get me through the first game and I'll get you through the second game? I didn't hear him say it yesterday. Although I wasn't. I that was just reading through uh, some transcripts because I was in. In South Carolina for the uh, the women, um, but I, yeah, 
I, I, I mean, that's a saying he's been pretty consistent with. And so it doesn't mean it's a promise that it'll always happen because he's only like two and three in the last five second games of first weekends. Um, but it's 24 and seven overall. And uh, what he means by that is, you know, I'll really have you prepared and, uh, and you, you'll, that's, I'll create advantages for you uh, through, through the scouting. And um, that he's said that pretty much throughout his whole career. Uh, TT, what do you do with Calipari if you're Kentucky? And from Spartan Frank, has any coach in any sport done, uh, done more with less as consistently as Calipari and survived over a decade? Uh, you know, he's doing a lot living on one title from years ago. Now, one title is nothing to sneeze at. People act like one title. Most coaches don't win a title. Matt Painter's never been to a Final Four. Izzo's got one title. The Big Ten doesn't have a title since Izzo. <laughs> like you know what I mean? Yep. A title is not nothing. Um, but in terms of his reputation and Kentucky being one of maybe four real blue bloods that exist, what Kentucky, Duke, Carolina, Kansas is that that might be the list? Uh, a, a place that cares that much about hoops were. And, and, and just sort of the way he's rubbed the fan base the wrong way by saying his job is to develop pros, and that's not really – not win as much. I, I, I'm I, – look, I think they get, if they can find $33 million uh, to part ways with them, they'll do it. I would uh, – I think it's probably time, and there's enough evidence. I don't know. Would you get but, rid of him? I, you know, I want to, and it would be hilarious if Campy ended up sending him into retirement, but I just don't – if you're Kentucky, what do you – who else are you going to get? Like, tell me. Is it going to be someone from your bloodline or something like that you're going to bring down and hope? I mean, Calipari can still get those NBA guys. And, yeah, like you said, one title is – but, see, one title at Kentucky with everything that you're given at that university is kind of – got to go, well, yeah, he only won one title with all of those. They brag about the NBA guys and all that, and that may get you some recruits. But, I mean, to be honest, I just don't – if you're Kentucky, you got to at least let him coach one more year or something. I just don't know who else who else is out there. It would be a good job. People would want it. And the beauty oh, yeah. of the job now, if, you're, if you want it, is that even though there's a lot of pressure, Calipari hasn't been successful lately. So if you come in with a slightly different approach, including the transfer portal, and they've used the transfer portal. It's an older team than people think. He uses that they're all young guys excuse. It's kind of BS. But if you came in with a slightly different approach, people would be open to it. You know what I mean? That's, it's, it's not a bad time to replace him. Uh, it's not like you know replacing him at, at right peak Anthony Davis 2012 and, be, and people having that expectation. You got to win there, but you could do it differently. And you know what? That did rub me the wrong way when Calipari's like, "You got to give Oakland credit." Then he goes and whines about how he it's a it's a an older team game now, and I had five freshmen, blah blah blah. See, that's where he loses me. And I was like, "Fuck Calipari!" But yeah, I mean, he's still uh, look. I understand the kid's 25 who hit all those threes, <laughs> but he's still a guy who came from Hillsdale. Like you're at Kentucky, like go ahead and go ahead and put somebody on him. And you all know, he like, shoots is threes. He doesn't fucking right. pass the ball, and he shoots nothing but threes. Michigan State put gave somebody him no looks, him. and he went, yeah, he went one for ten. Like it's not, right. yeah, right. That's that's on you. Crazy, uh, David Jackson. Next, if you could guarantee that Tyson Walker and Jaden Akins will shoot like this with solid con- uh, contributions from Hogard, would you predict MSU to beat North Carolina? And from MZA, what chance do you give MSU against UNC? And from G Quang. How does MSU get their win? And from Michael Warheit, <laughs> what is the key to beating North Carolina? Hack, Bacot? Yeah, like, so this is a lot of the same question one. That's why I combined them. Um, I just wish it kept going. Yeah. <laughs> and from Spartan Johnny and Dominic. Eric Schultz chimes in late. He's got his uh, – uh, so – Let's start with the, the first part of that. If you guarantee Tyson Walker and Jay Nagins will shoot like this with solid contributions from Hogarth, you predict MSU to beat Carolina. I think how they do on the glass is really important in this game. Uh, the ability, because North Carolina is a tough half-court defense to deal with. Uh, to be able to run a little bit against these guys is important. Um, not to give up second looks. And Michigan State's been really good. They've out-rebounded, I think, four of their last five opponents, including Purdue and Mississippi State, the best two rebounding teams in those conferences. Like, all really good development. And they don't have to out-rebound North Carolina. They don't have to uh, hold Armando Bacat to, like, two like they did two rebounds like they did Tolu Smith. But that is a 
that is an essential component. Um, but yeah, they need the shooting. Like you talk about the key shooting to me is is what you do on the glass, and then also hitting shots. Like this is a Michigan State team that when they hit sh- when they hit shots, they're just they're good enough to beat anybody. And you just don't know if it's going to happen. It, it's it's Jaden Akins hitting shots, or it's Malik Hall hitting shots. It's it's a, hitting enough shots. They got it. There's got to be enough where it, you know it, it can. It doesn't have to be Akins, but it really helps when it's him. Um, because of his athleticism and how it seems to fuel him on the other end, uh, I, I think it's it's rebounding and it's hitting shots. And that sounds simple, but for this MSU team, that I think the defense will be there in a lot of ways. I think uh, the compete level will be there. Uh, the, can they rebound and can they get out and run and can they hit open shots? And that those are not always guarantees with this group. Uh, next one from David. Was Malik Hall's bucket at the first half buzzer the biggest t- uh, toment? Is that right? Toment of the game aside. Moment, from- moment sorry. Oh, moment. <laughs> My bad. I'm like, is this a word? I've never- a moment of the game aside from Aiken's elbow knocking out uh, Cowbell's star. Yeah, when that, I mean, that was a pretty decisive block. And then to have his elbow hit the head, you know, I mean, I, I, did, first of all, I was going to ask you this. Do you think that was a foul? When I, I know that it's clean up top, but when you on the way down, your elbow takes out somebody in the temple. Like I was like, I don't know, maybe that is. I mean, I know it's not on the ball, but you still can't do that, right? Right, you're hitting after the fact, and I think that's a, one of those plays. It's a fifty-fifty call if you call it either way. I don't mind that, but it's just the way that, like I said, the refs that they they ref the game differently in each stage of the game, first half, second half. It's just bizarre. It's like either you're gonna let them play or you're gonna call it tight, right? Yeah, it's anyway. uh, yeah. I I didn't hate. I mean, I understand why they didn't call it because they're looking up top and yeah. Um, but it was yeah. It was it was it was obviously a great play. Was that the uh, was Malik Hall's bucket in the end of the first half buzzer? Though is the question. I it was a huge play, and I didn't even write about this, but it was a big play. It felt like after Mississippi State had gotten a little going, it felt like Michigan State sort of recaptured a mo- a little bit of momentum. I thought that in the women's game yesterday at South Carolina. They had a couple buckets, either end of the half, end of quarter, beginning of quarter, like moments where they were – I mean, they were everything was a grind for them that kept it to within nine, kept it to within seven, and just gave a different feel going into a break or out of a break. And, and um, those, those things are, are really important sometimes. David, uh, who had Mati Sissoko on their scorecard as MSU's best big in the last two games? I, you know, I give, I give Sissoko a lot of credit. It, it's – uh, I had a great conversation with him and wrote the column on him and Akins, who are roommates, uh, the other day. And, you know, he was – it was interesting. And there's a good piece on CBS this morning that ran on, on Sissoko today. But he's sitting in his locker, like sitting back, scrolling his phone. This is Sissoko. And, and he was – he looked so pleased that somebody wanted to talk to him. Like, I think he just thought that part of his career was over. And um, I, he's been down on himself. And, look – there is no question that he has not developed as they hoped, that he has not been enough of the, the big man they needed this year. Uh, that's on the coaching staff. So some of his development, some of it's on him. Because when you see games like this, it's like, well, wait a second. Right. Be that all the time. And he's gotten in his head. He's lost He's lost some confidence here and there. Uh, but he's been really good. And when he is, when he's doing nine rebounds in 17 minutes, MSU will win with that Sissoko. Like, they just need him to be uh, – you know, watch film with Ben Wallace, Dennis Rodman, whatever it is. Like, be that guy. And they've got enough around you if they're hitting shots to win games. Isn't it too late for showing film for a senior guy or whatever? Probably. But, probably. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Love you, Matty. Spartan uh, Johnny, if Matty wants to come back. Oh, why, maybe not too late. Yeah. Why wouldn't we want <laughs> him riding the pine, providing depth and ready to bring it when called upon? Because we can't carry that many bigs, assuming we bring in another. Yeah, uh, it, it's a good question. I, I think there's a chance Mati Sissoko comes back um, just because he may want it, and he's not somebody they don't like. And you're not, you're not building – it's different than Hogard, right? A.J. Hogard is not coming back to ride the pot. Like, if you bring A.J. Hogard back, he is your starting point guard, and they're ready to move on from that. And it, he's had four years. It's not like they're kicking him out of the program after his junior year. It's just they're saying let's not do the extra COVID year. I don't think he wants to do that. And I, I – but Sissoko is different. He's a big man. You can have, he doesn't have to start. He, and I think he's probably well aware at this point that his role is not guaranteed. It is not 
always going to be large, but if he might want to be part of the program, um, you know, and uh, he he may, you know, I we'll see. He may also want to go someplace where he, he can play more. I'll be very curious what he does, but um, MSU has been home to him in a lot of ways, different than other players in the last four years. So uh, that that'll be a conversation that's and, and getting Sissoko back does not preclude you and should not preclude you from addressing the position in the off season beyond him. Spartan Johnny, North Carolina minus three and a half. Hammer it and be happy if MSU wins and be financially better off if they lose? No. Don't do it. Yeah, because what if North Carolina wins by two? Either then way. Then you've lost and you're annoyed. <laughs> yeah. That it's, I, yeah. I, I'd be more inclined to throw them in like a teaser where Michigan State gives – so Michigan State could still win by, you know, three points and you – you win, um, but North, you know I don't know. I'd be more inclined to do that. Yeah, I mean I'm not telling you what not to do, but the three and a half scares me because you could see this game coming down to the wire. Michigan State losing a heartbreaker, and you've also lost the bet because you needed North Carolina to win by more than more than three. Listen, I did it two years ago with the Duke game. First half was it minus two and a half? I just promised I'd never bet against. It's not fun enough. Like there isn't enough money involved, right, to please you either way. Unless you hammer the money line and put a thousand on it, maybe. But what the way you say either way is so t- I can hear Tim Stout's voice. Either way, or, <laughs> either way, it's uh, uh, yeah. No, look, if you're nervous about this game or you're excited about it, whatever you're feeling, uh, there are time to have Groovy Donuts be your companion for the Michigan State basketball game. Groovy Donuts. If you're listening live, if you're listening to this uh, t- today. Um, Anytime before 1 o'clock, get out to Groovy Donuts on Lake Lansing Road in East Lansing or in Williamston. Uh, if you want to watch, you know, you want Groovy Donuts to be part of your life at any point, go to GroovyDonuts.com, place your pre-order, and uh, you, can have, you can have Greg Campy's face on a donut. And uh, you could have, you know, Mati Sissoko on a donut. You can have whatever you want on a donut. North Carolina, minus 3.5 on a donut. Whatever, whatever, whatever you want, and any kind of donut, and uh, Monica and Andrew will, will will happily do that for you. There's just a huge difference. Their donuts to like other places, just the quality, the uh, the care. They do it right there. They do them fresh. It, I'm telling you, anybody who's had a groovy donut understands the difference. You can do what my wife does. She buys six, she cuts one piece out of each to enjoy it, and then I eat the rest of the box. And uh, it, it's a win-win for everybody. Again, GroovyDonuts.com. Place your order today. She buys six and eats one and hides five. <laughs> Tyson's Fury, if Kohler, Cooper, and Sissoko all come back next year, will Izzo still look for a center in the portal? I, it's, it's a good question. I, I would, I would think, I would think he will look. F- it's, it, it's a good evaluation question. You have to because, and you're, you're counting on Booker being part of this too. Uh, I would think so, and it, it, you want somebody who's. Flex, like a rugged rebounding type who's flexible enough to play multiple positions, ideally, the foursome. Um, but you've got I, – I think you need it. Um, now, there's also a chance, and this isn't the worst thing, that those guys take steps and beat them out. Like, I, I want to see Kohler healthy after a summer. I, I think, you know, we didn't get to see that this year. It's been a rough year for him. He's played a lot better late. I would, I would like to see what he – what he is, and I think, you know, we've seen him with uh, Xavier Booker's a really nice pairing. I think Cooper, you know, I might have just been a year ahead on his d- development and where he should be, but that's not a bad thing. You know, this is big boy basketball. If somebody comes in to be part of the MSU experience and one of these guys beats him out, as long as the coaches are willing to, you know, not make promises to just play the better person, so be it. I, I, I would I would be I, – I mean, I think they may need size on the wing – and they may need a big man. We'll we'll see who sticks around too. That's the other question. It's gonna be an interesting off season. Uh, I'll start writing about that as soon as they lose, and uh, you know maybe not till maybe not uh, maybe not this weekend though. Uh, Beppe Plum next is Oakland winning cool because they are the underdog or because they are my hometown team. Oh, the days of riding my bike to campus only to see college girls that are way too pretty for me. I still do the same. I'm just creepy old guy now. 
Um, Should we call the police? Or I don't know. I mean, that's yeah, I don't know where to go with this. Pepe. Yeah, Are we. You have pants on when you ride the bike, right? I just want to make sure. <laughs> Questions need to be asked. It's cool because for both. It's cool because if you, if you, if they're your hometown team, that's cool. It's cool because they're underdog for everybody else. It's cool because it's Oakland. Everybody likes Campy. I think it's cool in this state. Like nobody, if you don't like Greg Campy, unless he's done something to you personally, um, you're an ass. You know. So like, I, I think that's part of it. And it's there's a lot of connection. I mean, Blake Lampman, who I've written like seven columns on from Hazlitt's on that team. Rocket Watts is on that team. You feel good for him. Uh, you feel good for Campy. You just feel good for a program to have that moment. Uh, and it's also great. The national media is finally seeing Greg Campy, right? We all know yes. Greg Campy and all that stuff. It's just awesome to see him get the limelight uh, for that game. Uh, Beppe Plum, a bigger crazy moment if Oakland would win the tournament or if Vanderbilt won a college football playoff. What's bigger? What would be crazier to you? Uh, I would say Vanderbilt winning a CFP. I would. I don't know. They're both ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I mean, yeah. I mean, we have seen like so. Oakland is at the level in the Horizon League that Butler and Loyola both were when they reached the Final Four, and Butler did it twice and reached the championship game. So, it, I would say it's less crazy in basketball where you can hit shots, and the Oakland like could be a program that that made a run. And in football, so much has to happen to the line of scrimmage. Like even if Vanderbilt became Northwestern, and we've seen Northwestern you know, win the Big Ten years ago, but also more recently be in the Big Ten championship game, win the West, be a really solid, good team, and be good enough to get in what will be the new college football playoff. The idea that they would win enough games once there with what you have to do with the line of scrimmage just seems far-fetched. So I think it's probably Oakland over Vanderbilt, even if Vanderbilt became Northwestern. NPC softball dad. If the MSU team that played today was the team we got all year, what seed would they have received? Anyone happy to see a dominant performance but still pissed they didn't play like this all year? Yeah, I think there's a reason. I think it's fine to be annoyed. I mean, you can live in the moment, and you can be grateful it showed up. Um, I'll say this, though. If they beat North Carolina, they essentially are the one seed, right? They take over North Carolina's track. So maybe this was just a slow play. Once they realized they couldn't be a one, it's like, screw it. We'll be an 8-9. No, I'm kidding. Um, yeah, no, it's it, – if they had played this way all year – and they had beaten certainly Ohio State and Iowa at home. Um, they would have beaten uh, Minnesota on the road. And they win that game against Purdue in the Big Ten tournament, right? Yeah, they probably win one more. So let's say they minimum, minimum four more wins. Because you're going to have some games where, you know, even Purdue lost at Northwestern and things like that. So you're talking instead of 18 regular season wins, 22 22 and 9. Uh, you know, they may have four, five, four seed, maybe. I don't know, something like that. Yeah. Uh, Miller, Miller next. If Davis Smith, the point guard leader, slash leader, I should say, of the MSU scout team, and could that contribute to guys getting moved there and instantly improving? Davis Smith's a heck of a story. And, I, you know, I don't, I, he's kind of played this like senior day. He could have more time, too. I don't know if he, he wants to. I, I, I'm actually curious to see if he uses the end of his eligibility. I think he's got another year to, like, go play D2 ball somewhere. Because uh, he is, uh, yeah, he's a big part of their scout team. He's a big. It was cool to see him hit the three the other day. Like, he's um, he's different than the other walk-ons. I, I don't, I don't know that that has a whole lot to do with it because the scout team is not playing. It's not like pickup ball. They're playing the role of the other team. So it's a, it's 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 um, it's just a little different uh, uh, in, in that regard. Uh, Miller, Miller, do the walk-ons get NIL money too? If so, do you see Mahdi staying for his last year, uh, even if he's just a, as a scout team guy, so he can keep funding his charity? And how much could it de help develop other bigs to have a guy with his strength on the scout team? You know, it's a good – I mean, the charity component's interesting. And, we'll talk, and the NIL – I mean, that's true. Like, that does help him fund that school, and I think that he's got people trying to – make sure that's sustainable but you know what's also weird is if they just went through this is sparta instead of sd4l with the charitable component and the tax situation they've set up like they have international athletes he could actually be getting his money if they had gone through this is sparta i do not understand um i i don't i don't get it i i just yeah i don't get really why uh why they've done that but yeah it's, that's a good point and and you know, I, I do think Sissoko could have value on a roster. I'm not I'm not saying he isn't. You just you have to be past the point where you count on him. 
You know, I think that is um, that is just that's important. You know, I mean, and, and so we'll, we'll you know we'll see whether. Uh, but what if he plays well against North Carolina? Michigan State moves on, and Mahdi keeps showing this these glimpses or whatever. You know what I mean? Like that's why it's just so bizarre to me. Well, and then it gets interesting because the next. Uh, you know the person you're trying to recruit if you do want to add to that position might look at it and go I don't I don't know if he's staying you know if he's staying if I can win that job and and does it get harder um I it, yeah these are it's a good I don't I think you I still don't think you can trust it because he's had enough time to, to to prove it like even if he's and there are so many limitations to his game even when he's really good as a rebounder I still don't know that he's a starting big in the Big 10 I still think if you told me that Mati Sissoko was was going to be an impact player for a year, playing 15 minutes a game, I could buy it. I think he could have that impact. I do not think um, – yeah, I, I really don't know that it, 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 it works anymore to trust him to be your guy. I think we're just beyond that point, and, and you know, if he were to somehow win the job, then, then so be it. Uh, Gary Libka next. Am I correct in my assertion that Coach Izzo has never defeated a number one seed in the round of 32? Um, Somebody called Jack Ebling. Yeah, he, he, don't believe. No, I don't believe he has. No, I, I, right. So that's this would be new in that sense. You know, I don't think he's ever had this particular team in this setting. Like I think last time he was a nine seed, they, it was 2000. Uh, 17 was it uh and uh they were you know that group with a lot of freshmen that thumped miami and then lost to kansas like that team was not at this level and um so you know i it's he is not but i don't think the dynamic has been quite this either professor next how are tip times determined for future games is it just expected audience yeah some of it's yeah, prime time. Yeah, right. It's it's like when Kentucky loses, that changes tip times for other teams. There's a pecking order, and Michigan State gets uh, more and more. Uh, like the chance that Michigan State was going to wind up in prime time probably went up when Kentucky lost. But there are also windows in which it's like CBS only, and you know, in the second round, and and which games can carry the whole audience, and there are things like that. But yeah, it's it's certainly it's it's based on 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 TV a hundred percent. Cooper next. Why don't you warn us on proper sponsor usage order? Muskox to Firekeepers equals good. Firekeepers to Front 43 equals great. Pure options to Groovy Donuts is fantastic. <laughs> Pure options to Manscaped, bad. Very, very bad. Don't try this at home, kids. Yeah, yeah. I, I would say that. Pure options is great for everything but putting a razor to your balls. <laughs> I don't um, think there's a better time to take, have a couple MGs running through your veins, to be honest with you. It's when I'm sober is when I start nicking my bag. And a reminder for people, you go to manscaped.com uh, and use the, the promo code RUBE for 20% off and free shipping, and uh, you can be as uh, clean and smooth as, as me and Jason. And uh, <laughs> your wives will, uh, or significant others, might appreciate that. Or just be like Barry and get a uh, Barry. Harry and... Uh, Thinking of my boss, I apologize. I haven't introduced Manscaped to him, but I like Harry, who, who just you know has a has a f freaking you know just a, a, a looks like he's know, wearing a sweater. Forest. Yeah, I, I can't even, God, struggling with words here. That's not good. <laughs> but on his back, and you know needs to needs to shed clothes. He's like a sheep with wool. Yeah, and uh, Manscaped is is here for you uh, in that sense um, as well. All right, Spartan eighteen seven seven zero, Jason. If you had the $40,000 again, what would you buy? Can't invest or put it in the bank. Nothing responsible. Well, thank God those are the rules. A golf simulator mm. for the house. I like it. Yeah. That is I don't know sounds, where it would be fun. in the house. Maybe the garage. But, yeah, those things run about twenty grand. It would be awesome. So it, what, what do you get for twenty? So it's like you, you – you get a picture of different courses and stuff like that, and you hit yeah, just into a, it? Or yeah, it's just a picture. You put a, They put up a picture of uh, Pebble Beach, and you just hit it. Yeah. No, it's like a. there's a whole computer system. There's all different angles of cameras you need. It's like a wholly intricate, wild, crazy system, so you can just hit a golf ball into a mat. But they're fun to play, especially with the weather around here. Like, it's complete ass, so you just walk in your garage and start, start playing. It would be fun. 
So I, I might start having to hit golf balls in the backyard uh, as soon as I get home because, uh, although I hear the snow on the ground, but my wife badly wants to put up a new fence, like a higher fence, really nice fence. Mm-hmm. Fine. My issue is I think it's sort of rude to the neighbors. And our next-door neighbor's on board with it. I worry about the neighbor behind us. What do you? I've asked you this before, but is it rude to put up? And so to me, if I, if I take up golf – and I look like I have something that's caught giving us a reason to have a higher fence or something that could be annoying or dangerous to the house behind me. It justifies the fence. Is it rude to put up a high fence in a backyard? Does it say, I don't like you to your neighbors? If you, I don't know, because we don't really talk to our neighbors, so I would just say build it sky high because I don't, I don't really give a shit. But it sounds like you guys have a whole neighborhood weird thing with on Facebook. So it would look weird if you're inviting friends over. Like, what are you guys hiding, right? Or like... I don't know. I'm yeah. with you. I, I honestly am with your wife. I would like a fence because I like to, would like to sit in the backyard because there are some nosy fucking neighbors. I've had them before, and they're complete ass. So I would build that damn thing 20 feet high and then see the neighbors when you go get the, the mail or something else. Yeah, I think the idea is she doesn't want to see the neighbors. Like, yeah. um, and, uh, and I it's agree fr- with fine. She likes her privacy. She's, she's different than me. I like, you know, I've told her, I will go about this any way she wants. Like, if we, I would rather... Rather than build a fence that is rude, I would rather just start being naked in the backyard so that everybody else wants us to build a fence. Like I feel like that's more appropriate, even through being inappropriate. Um, build a you know, build, I, build a fence or go on the sex offender list. I don't know. It's a tough choice. I'll I'll take the fence over that. That is a story almost worth telling, and probably not worth a sponsor read. But nonetheless, presented by our friends at Midtown Brewing Company in downtown Lansing the presenting sponsor of our Bracket Challenge, um, which uh, we appreciate them for. And uh, hopefully you are a part of it and you are doing well. I can't believe my wife's in fourth place. That's just ridiculous. Um, unbelievable uh, place to uh, for a date night, for a place to watch a game and multitask. Like if you want a cool date night, but you want to watch the games during the NCAA tournament, um, it, it doesn't feel like you picked a sports bar for that reason. But they'll have everything, and you'll enjoy that experience. 402 South Washington in downtown Lansing. All right, uh, Spartan. Uh, is it true that Hogard wearing his shorts backwards was it a pure options advertising stunt? I, I did he really have his shorts on backwards? I didn't. I couldn't tell. I think we either changed at halftime or. I don't know. Um, I that's the first I'm hearing about it. I didn't really yeah. look close enough to his thighs to see. Yeah, what, I mean, the shorts were on. Yeah. Him. It would not surprise me if A.J. Hogard and Pure Options had a deal. <laughs> it would not surprise me. Maybe he's a big crisscross fan. Remember those guys, those little oh, kids? Oh, my that... gosh. There's a reference. Remember these guys? They used to wear, like, their pants backwards. And that came out when that we were young, and I remember I put, I put my jeans on backwards, and my dad goes, what the hell are you doing? I was like, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> he was so pissed. I'm like, it's, come on, Dad, it's crisscross. They're wearing their yeah, – anyway. Uh, that's like 92, man. That's like our middle school years yeah, almost, yeah. right? Oh, God, yeah. yeah. Easily. Uh, no, that's tre- tremendous, tremendous recall there. Yeah. Spartan, uh, if Michigan State makes it to the Final Four, will you take Chad Latz with you? And from Mean <laughs> Joel Green, if MSU makes the Final Four, is there a prize bet for an all-expenses-paid hot Latz spring break trip to Hawaii Spa brought to you by Manscaped and Pure Options? I, I am more likely to take Chad Latz to the Final Four um, – but hot lat spring break trip to Hawaii spa is not. I, I don't. I don't because two things go wrong there. One, I, I don't. Uh, I don't want to go with another man to Hawaii spa. Not that I want to go to Hawaii spa. Period. And you're a part um, of sex crime. I mean, there's that. Y- yes, there's that. And then I don't 100 percent trust lats at Hawaii spa. If you know what I mean. Like I don't know where that goes. <laughs> That's why so you drop I, yeah. them off. You don't go in to be security. I, I don't need to be part of that evidence chain. Um, there's there's. Yeah, no, I'm more likely to take him to the Final Four. Come on, come on. Oh, I love you, Lats. Uh, Matt Boone, what was the reaction of the writers at the game? Were they surprised by how one-sided it was against the Bulldogs? I, I think some, I mean, yes, a little bit. I, I think even Justin Frommer, who covered Mississippi State, was in watch Michigan State all year. Uh, that's and, and, and Rex Road, who, who saw the game against Tennessee. and uh, But pretty early on, you could tell it. Um, and then people have seen it a lot know they have this propensity to do this in the postseason. They have this in them, and um, where they saw the Baylor game. So I don't know what the 
overall surprise. It was impressive, though. It was different, and it was it was it was the Baylor esque. It was one of those games where you go, "Huh, okay, wait a sec. Is are are they going to do this?" And uh, you know, we'll find out uh, against North Carolina, obviously. Grob, next, I want to hear Jason do some Tim Stout impersonations about the game. Let's celebrate for twenty four hours. <laughs> Okay, you know what? I was, you know what? It didn't surprise me because Michigan State played well. I know that they could play well. Okay, I know Tom does his due diligence. That's as, that's as much as I got. That's, you say that's pretty good. Due diligence is one of the words that he likes to use, and it's like <laughs> eighteen <laughs> syllables. Uh, next one from Grab AJ Hogarth's eight assists push him over the six hundred mark for his career, uh, and he passes Eric Snow on the assist list, who had five hundred and ninety-seven. Hogard moves from sixth to fifth in the all-time assist leaders and is one of the only uh, is only one of five Spartans with 600 assists. So the the question here, I guess, is is Hogard underrated, underappreciated? To me, like the the frustrating part of Hogard is nobody's doubting he has some ability and that he can be great in moments. And uh, one of his best bets is if you can get an alternative line someplace on, you know, plus eight, you know, eight, eight plus assists. He had it the other day. Early in the year, that was like plus a thousand, and he'd come close, and or, or had it at least once. When it now it's like plus three hundred. The value is not as not there as much. But yeah, no, he's Ogard is not a bad player. He's a he's a a, a frustrating player, infuriating at times. I think to people, um, but there there have been many worse point guards. Uh, it's just that he and, and I still do wonder if they had more of a you know a, a, a ready made center this year and a more of a complete team how much more they would have won and how different we would think uh, of of A.J. Hogard. Let's take a really quick break. Uh, we come back, we will dig back into your groovy donut Twitter questions. Couch in the Rube, presented by Pure Options, Precision Crafted Cannabis, and our Saturday morning show, brought to you by our friends at Firekeepers Casino and Firekeepers Eye Casino and Sportsbook app. Hey, sports fans, are you tired of the same old routine? Looking for a way to unwind after a long day? Look no further than Pure Options, the premier destination for all of your cannabis needs in Lansing, Detroit, Muskegon, and Mount Pleasant. Whether you're cheering for the Lions, Spartans, or the Wolverines, Pure Options has everything you need to elevate your game day experience. And here's the best part. Mention Couch in the Rube when you visit Pure Options and get a free GoPro 8 with a $50 purchase. It's our way of saying thank you for being a loyal listener. Swing by Pure Options today and elevate your cannabis experience to a whole new level. Firekeepers Online Casino and Sportsbook is the site to play from your phone, tablet, or laptop. Get in on all the football action with pre- and in-game wagering. There's showdowns every week in football that you can't miss. Plus, the college and pro hoops are red hot and the pucks are cool. Get your first casino deposit and sports wager mashed up to $500 each. Terms and conditions apply. Must be 21 or older and located in Michigan. Gambling problem? Call the Michigan Problem Gambling Helpline at 1-800-270-7117. Where else can you cheer on your team, enjoy a mouth-watering burger or savory sushi, sip on handcrafted cocktails, or one of 46 beers on tap? Take your game day or date night to Cask & Company Kitchen Bar or Front 43 Neighborhood Pub near Frandor. Two amazing places with one awesome blended modern American-Asian menu. Catch the game on one of 30 60-inch TVs or stop in for the all-you-can-eat lunch buffet. Enjoy happy hour or elevate your night out at Cask & Company or Front 43 on East Saginaw in Lansing. Ever wonder how comfortable you can be and how good you can look? Put on a Muskox flannel and find out. Muskox has new arrivals for this fall, including the Caper Green Grand Flannel, which even makes couch look good. Muskox is a Detroit-based flannel company that creates soft and durable flannels made to last a lifetime. They become a great partner with Couch in the Rube, not just because they make us look good and feel good, but because they're good people too and a socially conscious company. For every $100 purchase, $10 is donated to the Alaska Wildlife Conservation. Muskox flannels are designed with 100% cotton that is ethically sourced and double brushed for softness. Feel the quality and comfort of a Muskox flannel by ordering at GoMuskox.com, where Couch and the Rube listeners can enjoy $15 off their flannel purchase with the promo code HOFF. Find Couch and the Rube podcasts on Spreaker, iTunes, iHeartRadio, Spotify, YouTube, Facebook, Google Podcasts, CastBox, and the Rube's favorite podcast app.
Couch in the Room, presented by Pure Options, Precision Crafted Cannabis. Look, if you're uh, nervous about tonight's game, get to Pure Options. Locations Lansing, Detroit, Muskegon, and Mount Pleasant. Pure, Op- Pure Options offers a curated selection of premium ca- cannabis products to help you unwind and recharge. Uh, I've got to be able to pronounce that better. I, I should, I'd fix that in post, but uh, you know, as you know, we don't, we don't actually do that. Uh, don't wait. Try it today. And uh, again. Let them know we sent you. $50 or more on a purchase. You get a free eighth of ProGrow, a terrific uh, Pure Options in-house brand. Uh, go to pureoptions.com. Find the location nearest you and begin your uh, your cannabis journey with them. And our Saturday morning show, I don't know what day it is, also presented by our friends at Firekeepers and the Firekeepers Eye Casino and Sportsbook app. Uh, let's dig back into uh, the Groovy Donut Twitter questions. All right, Liz Basson next. Long time, first time, other than... The Hoff picture I sent. How was the focus and preparation these past few days as opposed during the season? It felt like night and day to watch. Yeah, you know, um, it's it's different. It's, it's weird because I had thought their preparation was really good a lot during the season. I would see practices and think they looked dialed in. I think Izzo would see that too. I thought this was a team that got along well, that looked like they were taking things seriously. I don't – it. it that never was apparent. Now, not every practice is open. Certainly not practices during and leading into the, the uh, NCAA tournament, like between games, Friday's practice, not open. Uh, the practice when they got here, like they do an open practice when they're basically doing layups and dunks and getting used to the rims, and then they go to another school and they do a real practice. And so, I, I, you know, I don't know how different it looked at all. I do think this is a team that's styled, and I do think this team cares about legacy. I do think a team senses the time is short. Uh, and I, I think they're as, as focused as they've ever been, uh, but it, it, how it compares, I, I, you know, it, it's hard to tell. Appreciate you uh, right in, Liz. Uh, Jeff Daly next. How Charlotte? Any good food yet? Yes, oh fantastic food. Good food. <laughs> yeah, I, like, I like food and donuts. Um, the first night here, and we've got a couple good places. Great burger burger place a couple nights ago, but the first night we were here. We land, and I had not been paying attention to a group text. And on the – Sean Windsor, anytime you travel with Sean Windsor, he's the foodie of the group. But there's a barbecue place like an hour outside of town near High Point in Winston-Salem that he wanted to go to that even Solari knew about from 20 years ago. Just a uh, just old, old school place. And we, we, um, we drove up before we even came to the hotel an hour first night at a great evening and uh, had some of the best barbecue, best pecan pie. Best lemon meringue pie. Uh, I ate a lot, and uh, naturally, and uh, yeah, it was fantastic. You know who else has really good pies though? Midtown Brewing Company, uh, four hundred two South Washington Avenue in downtown Lansing. They put some of their pies on Facebook. Their desserts are outstanding, out of this world. Uh, really worth trying sometime. Fantastic menu, lighter stuff, heavier stuff. Great place for any occasion. And uh, lunch with a colleague, date night, uh, brunch on a, on a weekend or Tuesday night trivia, or to catch a game. And, of course, uh, our, our sponsor of our Couch in the Room 2024 men's and women's um, NCAA tournament brackets. I mean, Zion was a big deal because he was a huge guy, and I just broke my chair. Uh, G. Quang next. Which round one NCAA tournament upset was your favorite and why? Should be easy. Uh, it's Oakland. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it, that was fun, and, and we were at a yeah. It it, it 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 is one of the things I love about the NCAA tournament is when you're like in a, we were in a you know a bar and everybody sort of gets into it. You know what I mean? Like the final few minutes, it's just this common community, everybody rooting against Kentucky and for Oakland, and I, I thought that was a lot of a lot of fun. So, uh, MZA, do you think the shooting performances from Aikens and Walker are repeatable or just a fluke? Um, they're, they're repeatable. The, uh, it, it's just what you can't trust it. And I, I do think this is an opportunity with Aikens, especially to start to take steps toward the player. He can be consistent. Like if he can have a tournament run, you know, we saw it with Darrell Summers or whatever, but he, to be the guy that like, I think he needs to come back. I think he needs to have a good year. And, and, and I think he probably knows it, but, um, because he's not ready for the NBA. He just hasn't been good enough this year, hasn't been consistent enough, isn't big enough based on the player he's been. But he can also show them that he might be somebody who can step into a headlining role 
and we've seen people take that jump. And an NCAA tournament's a really good place to start doing that. I think he's pretty locked in. The key for him, he didn't even shoot out of this world in the last game. It's it's that hustle. It's that attacking the rim. It's that aggressiveness, as he called it. His relentless, his relentless, <laughs> fucking the Mel Tucker relentlessness. Um, and so yeah, I think that part is repeatable. And and if if he does that, even if he doesn't shoot out of this world, that's a that makes a big difference. MZA, if you had to guess which uh, big does MSU get in the portal? I have no idea. I really don't. I mean, I. I don't. I wonder how much they're even looking at it yet. I know some guys. The, you know, the kid from Stanford looks impressive and just went in the portal. But like, I, I hate that the portal's already open. I think it's dumb. Like, I understand you should have a roster, uh, staff big enough to handle all this. And in football, you got to handle all of it in December. And the, the NCAA tournament is just something special. And I'm glad that nobody's talking about the portal after the first couple of days once the tournament started. Yeah, wait until you're done. If a kid commit. Is, is too antsy to wait for that, then so be it. But I would uh, – but that said, I, you know, because I think you need, to have, you need to have a full evaluation of your own roster. I mean, you should know what you think you need, but you, you want to watch the NCAA tournament. You want to know who you think is coming back, and you don't know that yet because that changes who you need in the portal and how they all fit in roster construction. The portal should not open until after the season. It's, it's, it's asinine. There's so many people that make dumb decisions in high-ranking college athletics. There's just no, there is no good reason for that portal to be open. It's remarkable that it is. Chris Eastlick next. North Carolina is going to shoot 70% from beyond the arc against us, aren't they? they they've not been great, so they probably will. Um, I, Yeah, I mean – I, I would be more – if I was Michigan State, I'd be more worried about your own shooting because just of how well they've they've defended. Uh, next one from Chris. How crazy is this Shohei Otani story? Now that we've brought up Otani, we have to address on this, uh, on this show if Pete Rose should be in the Hall of Fame. The Otani story is going to be fascinating to watch unfold and, and just how – And it's tied in with Pete Rose. I can't wait. July <laughs> is going to be awesome. Well, yeah, we'll see if Otani ever plays again. I don't know. Are you I don't fucking know. kidding me? Is we'll he going to play again? How much money is he owed? That guy, that interpreter, is taking the the, taking the, the fall. fall for this. Yeah. yeah we're we'll not going to bust we'll Otani. No way. I mean, certainly we think of things differently, right? Then, I mean, I, I think of this. Like, think about weed, right? I mean, think about cannabis. Yeah, let's do if it. If cannabis had been legal. How different the NFL might have been over years and years and years. How many guys were kicked out of their college programs for something that they never should have been? Like Kelly, Kelly Baraka, the great player at Portage Northern, went to Michigan and, 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 and got booted out. Like, that guy's an NFL running back. He was with Charles Rogers and Stuart Schwe- uh, Schweigert and those, those, uh, that great 2000 class. So there's, he, there's one NFL running back who had a career who would not have had a career because Baraka would have freaking had a career. If, if, do we think of gambling differently now, especially if, if as long as you didn't bet on baseball, right? I think uh, you know, there may be some illegal gambling going on. You know, this is a lot of money uh, and, and, and illegal bookmakers and all that stuff. So who knows what, you know. But his interpreter um, was making like 300000 a year. Like what do you – I understand maybe sprinkling around maybe some bets, but I just – I don't know. I, I feel know. if I'm making yeah. that money and there's so much with this gambling thing, I'm just staying so far away from it. Like I love gambling, but – for that if I'm making three hundred k a year, I'm very. You know, if I'm Shohei Otani's interpreter, I'm very careful about this. That's sure. the other thing. I'm, let's 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 be uh, let's be smarter. Yeah. Uh, next one from Chris. Or as nice and open as Izzo is to the media, why does the same media seem to always want to play gotcha with him? Whether it's his recent quote or when he yells at a player, not referring to you or your colleagues, Graham. There is an element to me that like he's so accessible that. You know, the, st- the question you ask him at the NCAA tournament, and it's easier to do it there. You could always pr- probably get him on the phone or get him during the season or whatever, you know. So, it, it, and uh, yeah, it, it is, there is a level of gotcha with him. It, part of it is he's not a, he's not fluent in English, and uh, he's not a great communicator. He stumbles through things sometimes, and that leads to these, like, I, off- I speak is OEs at this point, for better or worse. I sometimes understand exactly what he means. But then I'll look at a transcript and go, ah, I can see how that's a little confusing. Uh, but that's and that's part of his. Um, I mean, part one of his those hardest things to, for people to interpret 
is he doesn't usually say on or off the record. He changes his tone and voice sometimes. <laughs> he expects you to know. Like, at some point, I'm surprised he hasn't gotten burned by that. Now, he's a little better at it than he used to be but uh, when he used to do more roundtables. But you just sort of realize, and technically, ethically, you could burn him once, but then he'd never talk to you again. So you, you, have, to, you have to be able to interpret his OEs. Kara Lee up next. When you ask for some Hoff and then Jason yells, Hoff, is he alerting someone else to turn on the Hoff? <laughs> or does Jason turn the music on himself? Appreciate you, Kara. That would be amazing if we just had one person or an intern here just to hit Hoff. That's all they did. Yeah. You're the guy. I'm the guy. It's, a- it's just more of yelling to give me – I feel like it gives me another second to reach over, grab the mouse, and then hit it if I yell Hoff. I don't know. This is 100% a two-man operation here. Yeah. And there's no explanation for a lot of it. Like people <laughs> at the end of the end of the show, when I go, yeah, man, when you say good show, I don't know where that came from. We've just been doing it. There's no rhyme it, or reason to this shit. And now we have to. Like if I don't say it, it's like – me not telling my wife I love her at the end of a conversation. <laughs> like, I don't feel right. Like, the show didn't end well. It, it throws me off course. I know. Well, you've done it a couple times, and I'm sitting there, and I look at the, the mic to close it off. I'm like, I guess we're not doing it today. Uh, Gavin, why does, this, uh, why does this feel exactly like last year's run for this MSU team, and why am I opening myself up to get hurt again? Because you are an MSU fan, you love MSU, and that's part of the fun of sports. Um, there is an element of last year because it's the same guys, and and um, yeah, and you're always going to do this because now you're a student there too. This is your team. This is your school. This is part of it. There will be other teams that frustrate you. You will be all in, and it's just hard to say, okay, like I, I, you know, all the people didn't want MSU to make the NCAA tournament. I think that's a pretty small faction. It's it's James Edwards and like six of his buddies, but. If, you know, though, like, you would have missed out on that Thursday game. Like, that's an incredible, um, yeah. Even before that game, this. though, Graham, like, like, waiting for the brackets to be announced and all of that, it just, it had to have changed a lot of people's tune on missing that thing. It did for me. 100%. Yeah. Uh, Gavin, obviously, it was a great season for the MSU women's team, but am I wrong for feeling like they underachieved with the last two games of the season? Well, what what happened the last two games of the season was you really saw teams when they get scouted and don't they don't they had a real problem at center. When you look at their roster, and this is a little bit due to injuries, some of it's just who they had you know inherited, and they know they've got to address that this off season. <clears throat> they don't have anybody in their playing rotation who isn't either a guard or guard slash forward, and you know they've got Tori Osmond who was recruited as a point guard, and that's part of the story I wrote today, playing some center. Uh, and they've certainly got Julia Arol, who's going to be back, who's a really skilled forward, really nice player, but she's not a center, and she battles in there with the with with with, with women who are like two, three inches taller, just longer, just different. I mean, it's you know, it's just the the situation with the roster right now, um, and so that created the you know eighteen to six on the offensive glass. They just, I think, some of their limitations caught up with them, whereas. Uh, during the year, they really maximized who they were. But I think also we saw a little bit of what we liked about them, right? They were a team that did not give in, did not give up, was feisty, was together, uh, played real team basketball in terms of hunting for a shot even when they weren't falling. I, I, It's frustrating, I think, as yesterday's game was. and I really enjoy the way they compete, the way they get after it defensively, the way they get their hands in passing lanes and steal and rip the ball away. They're... They are a, an entertaining style and team to watch, and I think that will prevail and continue. Uh, but, yeah, there's no doubt their limitations caught up with them, um, and, and I think they were even greater than – you know, you get to the NCAA tournament and you see a, the flaws of North Carolina, but then <clears throat> North Carolina also has size, and, and size could really hurt this MSU team when you had a good coach to, to couple with it. Uh, Gavin, lastly with this one, it feels like everything's set up, uh, setting up easily for UConn to repeat as national champs. What are some teams that could truly change that narrative? Yeah, you know, um, I mean, all the ones, I would say Houston, especially Purdue, especially Tennessee, I'm really intrigued about. Arizona, those are the teams. Um, now, UConn's got, who is it, Auburn potentially in the second round or third round. That is the game, right? That's is it Auburn or? Auburn's out. Auburn's out? Mm-hmm. I should pay attention to these things. We'll fix that in post. There's no chance anybody beats UConn. It is just UConn's path all the way. Jesus, I can't believe I. You, could, how, you, you couldn't hear Bruce Pearl yelling from the Carolinas there. 
I would, so here's Show. one of the interesting things. When you cover a women's tournament, you are covering a women's tournament. Like all the TVs in the press room, and I was there all day yesterday, are all on the women's tournament. It's like the men's tournament does not exist. <laughs> like, uh, so I was – and all the score updates, women's tournaments. Like I was really in the dark focusing on it, and, and I feel a little in the dark about yesterday's results right now. But what does that tell you about women's hoops, though? They think so – I mean, come on. Why can't you put on – you're worried that, what, it's going to take away people's eyeballs? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, there, you know? There, there is a little insecurity in that. I, I, that that's fair. Yeah, yep. David Zondi next. Why does the SEC doofus Greg Skanky talk about college basketball – particularly wanting more teams in the tourney. I mean, the basketball teams in his conference all really suck. Yeah, I mean, it's it's been hilarious what's happened because he's the, he's been the, the biggest jackass and proponent of expanding or fucking with the tournament or, or in, uh, you know, adding more at-larges for big conferences. And then the SEC is just, other than like Tennessee, is shit the bed here. So, yeah, it's been fun to watch. I, I wish the counter was this. Too many people are like, oh, no, no, let's hold what we have. The best way to me to make sure we hold on to what we have is counter-proposal something extreme the other way. Now, screw it. No more than two bids at conference or three bids at conference. Let's do that. Let's get more mid-majors. It's very clear that when you watch James Madison, which we haven't even talked about. like that. James Madison lost to Michigan State, maybe their fifth best result of the year. Think about that. Think about what you saw from James Madison against Wisconsin. If you knew that's who they were in that first game, how that changes the – way we see this Michigan State team. And this Michigan State team had to go one for 20 for three, even to lose an overtime to them. Now, again, at home, so that changes things a little bit. But um, what we've seen from Oakland, what we've seen from Indiana State and the NIT, like it is just so obvious that good teams in mid-major are better than most middling teams in high major leagues. That may not be the case always. Michigan State's one of those underachieving teams that focuses. Michigan State is the anomaly. But there's so many teams. It's just it's ridiculous that administrators think this. I don't think they do. I think they're greedy, or they're stupid. Um, and uh, I, I, the world is better off without Greg Sankey in college sports. Uh, that's I am a firm believer of that right now. Maybe Tony Petiti. All eyes there are on you, bub. He's got a stupid looking face. Nate C. This Saturday was made for interns. You know you'd rather go to the hockey game, Graham. Make the basketball game some kids' lucky break. I did want to go to the hockey game, and I, I, I it, it's one of those things where, like, if you'd told me what are two events more than anything you'd like to cover in one year, a second-round NCAA tournament game versus one-seed North Carolina would be up there. A Michigan State hockey game against Michigan in the Big Ten Tournament Championship, uh, you know, a, a, an atmosphere and setting that hasn't existed in, you know, 15 years. I don't know when the last time it felt like that would be at the very top. Like, it sucks that they're on the same day and they're in different towns, and I can't do both. I Yeah, I, I, want, I want to be there tonight, and I wish I could, and I'll be watching on my phone. And, and um, yeah, I'm not – yeah, it's it, it, it's it's a huge deal and uh, in East Lansing and that hockey game, and I'm glad they're not at the same exact time so that people can, you know, you can relax, get your groovy donuts, get your pure options, go basketball to hockey back-to-back, and, and hopefully – uh, by you know 10:30, you're not needing to be so deep in pure options uh, or eating through a box of donuts just to make your feelings uh, feel better. Jimbo Jones, where was this MSU team all year? Ah, uh, I think this should have went with the, the other question. the seven people that asked the same thing. Yeah, I thought I did actually. Jimbo Jones, Jimbo. That. Jim, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I, it's, it's it's a good it's a good question. It, uh, not not ex- non existent. Some of it I think is. Development guys like Xavier Booker becoming plus players, Jackson Kohler becoming better. But why Sissoko now looks like he did against you know Kansas a year ago, <laughs> but nothing in between. Uh, Sissoko is it, it's weird because he is very limited. But if he had just could have done, if he was just the uber aggressive player and who he is all the time, uh, his story would be very different. Andrew Gautier, where was this version of Madi all season? Seriously, if he rebounded it like this all year, we wouldn't have said shit about the center position. Hundred percent, Andrew. I mean, it it is. That's uh, you would have said shit because there's still frustrating moments. Like, but it, there would have been an acceptance of okay, he's limited, and there are limitations because offensively he'd still have some issues. But if he was, you know, I mean, he out rebounded a great rebounder nine to two the other day. I mean, I, yeah, no, there's no doubt. It would have changed the narrative. 
Uh, next one from Andrew. Is this the weakest North Carolina team the Spartans have met in the tourney? We always seem to uh, catch them when they're a buzzsaw. Doesn't seem that way this season. Um, I don't, you know, it's a good question. They're certainly not 2009 North Carolina. And 2007 North Carolina they faced, that was an, like a 1-8 a, a or 1-9 game. Um, I'm trying to think, you know, the team – to face Carolina in the NCAA tournament in 2005. That Michigan State team might have had a chance of Allen Anderson and healthy. It's hard for me to know, but yeah, I think this might be. I can't think of everybody they face, but this might be certainly the best matchup for Michigan State uh, in that in that setting. If Michigan State does win, uh, and you're looking to celebrate, speaking of Andrew Gautier, Groovy Donuts, uh, GroovyDonuts.com. You can do a special order. Michigan State, you can do Michigan State's whole roster by number, by face. Face is a little difficult, you know. Don't don't act, but but they'll taste just as good. Whatever you do, and uh, by Jersey, uh, go to GroovyDonuts.com or swing by either location, 7 a.m. to 1 p.m. Thursday through Sunday on East, uh, East Lansing on Lake Lansing Road and also in Williamston. Uh, Captain Spartan next is Izzo, the best coach of all time. If he wins the championship this year, top five? No. I mean, top five, you you could look at – if he wins a second championship, that puts him in a pretty rarefied group. And what he's done to a middling program and, and changing them and, cre- and making them sort of – not a blue blood, but the closest thing the Big Ten has these days, the the preeminent brand in, in, in the Big Ten, that is, that is impressive beyond, like, taking over a great program and sustaining it. Um, so you could argue top five. I, I think it's hard to argue number number one just with one more title. But uh, you can make a case if he wins a second title, whenever that is, because of sustained success and how he um, elevated a program that wasn't this and changed everything about it and how it's perceived that he would be a top five, certainly. Lobster Puncher next. Are we as MSU fans entitled to also feel irritated with Thursday's performance? We have hardly seen an MSU team that that was that locked in all season long, and it seems like a menta- uh, mentality issue more than a personal issue. Rebounding and defending like that is a choice. Yeah, uh, yeah you're absolutely allowed to be uh, irritated. And uh, I would be irritated but also enjoy it as long as you can. Uh, Iman Sinner next. Carson Cooper is showing elite court awareness and already is always looking to dish out at, uh, of the post for open threes. Only problem is that they, all he can do offensively. Only problem is that is it's all he can do offensively. Teams don't have to collapse on him. Graham, how many points per game does he need next year for his passing to be a true threat? A zero in some ways because teams do guard him. I mean, yeah, but I, but I know what you mean. I I think what he needs to develop is a little bit of a, a consistent jump hook. Um, doesn't have to be fancy, six eleven, um, but just a little bit something that you can go to him in certain matchups, and he's a threat and he's a you know seven eight point a game guy if he's a starter. Now we'll see who they bring in and what his minutes are and what his development is. Um, you know, because there is a risk just running it back with these guys. I I I sense they will. Uh, I think they'll. <clears throat> Because if it happens again, it's really just on you. And, and and you have a team next year, just like this team had a lot of seniors that you may not get the most out of because you didn't have the bigs at the level you needed for a long time. Next year, you may have Xavier Booker, who could be you know probably one more year, and then he's a pro. you got to take advantage of that, right? So you got to have the right people around him and figure out what that is. Some dude, can you change the Manscaped promo code to Rube's Pubes? I, it's not a bad idea if I had thought about it. I didn't want it to be too long for people because then is there a, an apostrophe before the yes? Like, it, I had lots of good ideas, but you don't want it to be too complex because then people screw it up. You want to keep it R-U-B-E, you know, or, you know, like, uh, you don't want, like, Therese, colon, thank heavens. That could have been one good. You know, like, uh, you don't want to do that, but Rube's Pubes is not bad. Some dude, what were uh, pre-tournament odds on Moorhead State gobbling on Longwood in the championship game? Nice. A million to one. A zillion to one. Yeah. Some dude, Couch, at what point did you realize the Spartans would win? They came in play from the uh, jump 
or still don't trust? I, mean, I don't trust them moving forward, but I I think it was the beginning of the second half when they, they stayed in control. And, um, I mean, I thought the matchup was going their way, but when they really got a handle on Josh Hubbard and uh, in that second half, and, and I, that's when I, I, I thought they had it. Shep, Graham, on a scale of ass to proud to be an American, <laughs> how well does Rex Road know ball? Oh, he knows ball. Rex Road's a, a hooper, um, and uh, he does. It, the problem, I think a lot of people think this because of what he thought after the sort of his prediction of, of Mississippi State beating Michigan State. And, and look, we all get, become prisoners of one thing we see, and he saw he does not see Michigan State every day. He does not see Mississippi State every day. He saw Mississippi State, Tennessee, and I think Mississippi State was great that day. And so um, they, they, they beat him by 17. I can understand having that impact you. Oh, God. And I'm proud to be an American oh where at least I know I'm free. Ugh. I, yeah. God, my neck gets tight when I hear that song. The, um, <laughs> and again, it's not the, <laughs> it's not the lyrics. It's the tone. It's the, uh. <laughs> I, I'm choking. I'm <laughs> like literally choking on Lee Greenwood's lyric. Uh, uh, and I uh, won't tune. forget oh, the God. man who died who gave that right to me in a and, clan. By the way, Chad Latz is no worse than Lee Greenwood. Like, it's such a bad tune. It doesn't matter how your voice is. It's just, it's, it's, it's shit. Like, who comes up, even in the shower, nobody could come up with a worse melody than, than, than that. It's, it's, it's Because there ain't no awful. doubt yeah. I love this land. God bless the U.S. All right. Oops. Uh, I've never been that far into the song. Mr. Neurotic <laughs> Fans, Graham, did you catch any first four games? Grambling State was fun to watch, come alive in the second half. Pretty much every tourney team should have about 10 to 15 minutes of nerves to play through before they uh, find their play, and then it's golden. You know, I I watched a little of the first four. Um you know, I, uh, I I did not watch a ton of it, so I I'm, I'm glad I wasn't in Dayton though. I did not want to do that week where it's Dayton or wherever Dayton to Salt Lake or whatever it is, and that's a shitty week. So I was just grateful not to be there. Neurotic pants, Jason. If Graham lost a bet and you could choose a wig for him to wear in public, what kind of wig would it be? Oh. Uh. Uh. A wig of like uh, George Blaha. Oh, like a comb a over, swoop. but partly balding. I yeah. love George, but come on, George. There's like three wispy hairs that he just combs over for how many years he's been doing it. Just go bald, baby. You would have looked fine. It. I do. I no, no. It. I understand. I do not want this to be a shit fest on Blaha. I love Blaha. But if, I mean, come on. If we had to get you a, a wig, that would yeah. be great. I would wear the Blaha wig with pride. <laughs> Detroit 19 uh, next. Izzo has to beat North Carolina to tie Jawan in tourney wins during his time at Michigan, and Michigan hasn't made the tourney in two years. Also, does your fan base realize nobody else celebrates finishing second, third, or fourth? It sounds like a text message I received. Stop talking <laughs> about Final Fours as an achievement. This is why you're not a blue blood. Jordan, this is complete ass. Is this Jordan? Yeah. All right, Jordan. This yeah. is an ass. An ass uh, no, Jordan, I appreciate you. Love you, man. Um, so... <laughs> Here's here's where you're just wrong. One of the great things about the NCAA tournament is you do have this level that is the Final Four that is an achievement. It's it's a place you get to. It is a banner. It's always been that way in college basketball. It's just different than other sports. And one of the things I love about the NCAA championship is what is a cha what is sort of a great accomplishment is different to different teams. For some small schools, it is getting in the NCAA tournament. If you win a game like Oakland, they might lose to NC State, but this will be celebrated forever. You get to a Sweet 16, you come home after that weekend – Students are lining for a mid-major and, and, and lining the campus, and you're, the bus comes through. It's incredible. For some teams, it's a Final Four, like Loyola. Um, and a Final Four is always a big deal. And then, you know, for a few schools, it's it's the national championship. But a Final Four means something. It's something you have forever. It will always be that way in college. You're just wrong on this. You're just flat out wrong. The second, third, or fourth. I mean, I understand that it is better to win a national title. And, and Michigan State has not had great success in the Final Four. But a Final Four is a hell of an achievement. There's no... Uh, there's no question about it. Um, the idea Izzo has to beat North Carolina to tie Jawan and Turney wins uh, uh, during Jawan's time at, at Michigan. Look, that Jawan had a good start. He just couldn't keep it up. He did two things that 
Izzo does that he didn't, and this is why he's gone. He didn't have the consistency, which Izzo has had, at least of a baseline floor of getting into the tournament, and he couldn't hold players accountable, his own son, and that fucked his whole program. And that that is that is just – that's why he's gone, and those are two things that made Izzo a better coach than him. T-Bone's dad, am I crazy that if MSU beats North Carolina – then I'll be legitimately disappointed if they don't make the Elite Eight at minimum. And from J.D., Final Four or bust if MSU wins Saturday, yes? Um, uh, yeah, uh, certainly if they, beat, if they take over the one-seed spot, that it, 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 you get that element a little bit. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, I get that, though, because once you've beaten the one-seed, it's like – you ought to be able to keep rolling, and uh, you know, I, and I, especially after last year, where they got to the Sweet 16 and lost the same way. I certainly think getting a step further would be something to make people feel decent. And once, you, once you're in the six Sweet 16 final, you can taste it. The Final Four really becomes the only way to feel really, really good about something. Um, but uh, I, I don't know how because I haven't seen it play out. Like if they were to beat North Carolina and then lose somewhere the next weekend, I don't know how we'd feel. That would be an interesting thing to interpret. Uh, JD, who won the hashtag couch in the Rube Pick'em contest? Yeah, it was uh, it was abandoned midseason. I apologize, JD. Uh, <laughs> so like, you, JD, yeah. congrats. Yeah, there's some. Yeah, there's, it was not a, it was not a great performance by me this year. And this is with Eric Schultz being the man and helping out. And it's it just a really busy fall, and it, it was too much for me to to chew every week. And and um, I uh, yeah, I, I got to put a little too much on my plate and. and We'll, we'll do better next year. I'll be ready. I'll be more organized for it because I do like it. I like the idea of it. Uh, JD, North Carolina only three, minus three and a half, telling you anything. Or just another example of Vegas totally missing the mark on MSU this year. It's an interesting line. Like, I, I could understand somebody saying hammer North Carolina, but then you watch what Michigan State did the last game and makes you nervous. It, it, it tells me that there's respect for Michigan State. That's what it tells me. And Vegas knows if they start hitting shots, they can beat almost anyone. North Carolina, not really the – they are the worst of the number one seeds, right? The lowest yep. rated. So, Sparty and GL, is it possible to take all uh, all those that wanted the streak to end and make it impossible for them to watch any more Spartan games? <laughs> it's like a ban. You can't enjoy this if you didn't want it. Uh, every torture soul should take in their team in a different way. And, and look, I enjoy it. Admit you were wrong. Um, yeah, but no, th- this team was playing like dog shit. I can understand if you have that opinion and maybe thought that would change, maybe it would shake up Izzo and get him to do certain things. I have no problem with wanting that because at times this season, Graham, this Michigan State team has been fucking frustrating. So yeah. I understand. Even I, you know, you say some things that you don't mean because it's like, what are we doing here? 100%. Matt C., Graham, can you ask Izzo why he doesn't bench AJ when he makes a terrible turnover or gets lost on D? He played like ass Thursday. Booker and Carr got benched immediately, but he's never held AJ accountable for four years now. I hate AJ. <laughs> he didn't play like ass though. He was terrific. He right. was tremendous. He had he had four turnovers or whatever, maybe five. Uh, but he, you know, in the game he had twenty five points uh, against uh, Kansas State last year. He had four or five turnovers. That sometimes is not the best way to equate AJ Hogarth's performance. You don't want a lot of bad turnovers, but he really controlled that game it was, it, was, it was a terrific floor game from Hogart I just think you're wrong I I, I I don't you know they need AJ they need that AJ Hogart if AJ Hogart plays like he did Thursday today they got a chance Mojo Jojo can we get Greg Campy on the pod Graham grew up in Rochester wild to watch that would be he, he would do it uh, 100% um, and we maybe we can do this so we're not going to do it like during the tournament run I don't think um, but would uh, would love to have Mon just talk hoops after the season or something. That's something we should look to do. Because if they win what today, there's there's no way you're getting campy on, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's he's going yeah. national. Although he's he's interesting that way. Like I I could text him or his his SID is really helpful. It, I, it's it's not out of this realm. It, it, but I would it, part of it would be me respecting that he'd have bigger things to do than than you know do our show right now. But in the summer, I would love to do that. Mojo Jojo, why is the TNT crew, who uh, primarily do NBA games, providing analysis and commentary for the NCAA attorney? I love Chuck, but his hot take on Southern uh, MSU winning was whack. Yeah, people, I mean, the ratings must say it's good. People like watching those guys. I like watching them do TNT games. I don't love them on college basketball because I don't love, I love their moments where they're giving each other shit. But, but um, yeah, it's, I don't, 
But are you watching it to learn anyway, or you just want to be entertained until there's another game on? I mean, that's a fair point. But there's a and there's a lot of casuals that come in for this, and I do wish sometimes that there was a little more knowledge base there for the casuals, <laughs> getting the wrong opinion about everything from Chuck. But uh, it, he's entertain. It's hard to not want more Barkley. Uh, Alex James, what would MSU's record be if that Thursday crew officiated every game? That was like a breath of fresh air. Let the kids fucking play. Yeah, no, it's uh, that was I, I did like that style. Um, it it might be a game or two different. There's no doubt. Um, but MSU was not always the most bruising physical team this year, and uh, so I don't know that they went went out the, the way they would some years. They lost most of those games because they couldn't shoot, right? Yeah, and they had games where they just got out rebounded badly for a while. I mean, they had a real stretch of like there was a stretch in February where they got out rebounded pretty badly three straight games by teams that should not have done that to them. Alex, uh, Mr. Benjen, was MSU's best possession of the year, the second half one with two offensive rebounds, then kick out for a Holloman three-pointer? That felt like MSU basketball. Yeah, no, that was not, uh, that was, uh, and I think the first one was, was, was Booker who looked really smooth in there and then missed the shot and then Sissoko just went and got it and, and kept his hands on it and kicked it out. That was that was everything you want right there, 100%. Russell B., there were a few occasions. A.J. looked great driving in the paint and finishing at the rim. Graham and Jason, what were your favorite plays or sequences during the Mississippi State game? Was it the dunk? Was it the Aikens? What was your favorite yeah. favorite play? I, I love the – I think it was Tyson Walker went one on three and he shot a three and actually made it because yeah. you just don't see the, from Tom Izzo coach teams – if Walker's, you know, in transition coming down and shooting one of those, you're going to be on the bench, right? So I thought that was wild, and I thought it kind of switched the mood in the game. If if he would have missed that, who knows what would have happened. Also, Trey Holloman overthrowing Carson Car- uh, Carr twice, which yeah, I, I'm Cohen pretty Carr, sure yeah, – yeah. uh, Cohen Carr, excuse me. I f- I'm pretty sure that I could throw an alley-oop to, to Cohen. <laughs> it's just wild. Yeah. Like, how do you do that? Yeah, no, I, I'm with – to me, I, I love the block from behind um, – that's one of my favorite plays going back to, like, Tayshawn Prince against Indiana. You know, like, I just – I watching Aikens do that and watching athletes when you can just see a guy catching up and then take off, that is one of my favorite plays in, in basketball. Uh, witty username next. I've missed some episodes. Have you covered the Girls 5 Eva release on Netflix? Still five stars. We have not. And, uh, uh, yeah, no, always welcome to get into that. We Two segments, as we used to say. Um my wife has started watching it with with a friend without me, which I'm not thrilled with. Um, and it's our, or maybe she's just catching up on previous seasons. I don't know. It's out. We're aware. Uh, I've just been on the road too much, planning to settle in and, and, and watch a lot of girls five ever after the tournament. Uh, Dave Lakin up next. I watched several games on TV today. In addition to rushing the court after an upset, should they also eliminate high pitched uh, high pitched screaming during a free throw attempt? Extremely annoying, even hearing it on TV. Yeah, I mean, I don't know how you do that, though. You can't tell people not to cheer or scream, and, and then whose pitch is too high and who's too low? What if they don't like baritones? Ooh. Like that. <laughs> what if they don't like that, you know? And what if, what if caw is, is too booing? high? Is that booing? I or? don't know. I don't know what that is. It's more like a moo, you know? Uh, what if it's caw, caw, caw? You know, what if they don't want that? I, I don't know. I Yeah, I don't know how you eliminate caw. pitches. Uh, Bo McJunkins, can we have Rex Road on for his advice and thoughts, <laughs> and then we can do the opposite. He's on a roll. Hire Narduzzi. MSU is a bubble team. Now Mississippi State is the 84 Bears for MSU. Come on, Joe. Yeah, he's an SEC man who lives in 2015 MSU world. There's no doubt about it. I've given him some shit. Don't worry. Yeah, the Narduzzi thing. Uh, Bo McJunkins, what were your thoughts on Jonathan Smith's uh, spring practice? You know, I didn't see it. I was uh, I probably could have made parts of it, but I had other stuff going that day, and uh, it was part of it was getting on the road for a flight I almost missed. Uh, both Solari and I almost missed our flights to uh, to Charlotte. Solari usually does. Uh, me, I just uh, I, I I don't know what happened. Usually, Metro Airport's a, a breeze in the middle of the week. It was packed. Originally, the McNamara um, parking garage was full, and I had to circle back and. Um, 
yeah, it was just kind of a nightmare. And I, and then I took my sweet time because I'm a moron. And they were almost they were holding. The, Windsor had them hold the gate for me so I could uh, Jesus. so I could make it. But I, I uh, that is a story not worth telling, but told anyway. Presented by our friends at Midtown <laughs> Brewing Company, presenting sponsor of the Couch in the Rube 2024 black bracket challenges, both men and women. I hope you are enjoying that. Uh, and um, also a great place to watch games, to eat, and uh, be merry. And uh, um, yeah, so I, I I did not see it. I think there was just I, I don't know how much of it was open. I don't think all that much was open, but uh, looking forward to seeing it when I get back. By the way, can we get audio of uh, Sean Windsor holding a plane? <laughs> Hold that plane. He's coming. Hans Jurgen, could that Indiana State Center flourish at MSU, or would Izzo bench him for bad D? That's a good question, uh, Robbie. Uh, Robbie, what's his nuts? Um, yeah, he. <laughs> It would be fun to watch. I, that's a good question. Uh, I, it's a great I don't question. know what his defensive level is. <laughs> great question. <laughs> Go either way. <laughs> Hans Jurgen. I'd like to use uh, my manscape on my buttocks and beard. Well, do both, one after the other. Which goes first, though. Yeah. You go buttocks. Uh, I, you go, I would go beard first, my man. Mm, yeah. Uh, Hans Jurgen, who will uh, MSU play in the Final Four? Uh, let's see. Hold on. Let me uh, – let me pull up that bracket oh. one second. Come on. Come on. I am the passenger. I'm not talking about Michigan. And I ride and I ride. I ride through the All right. All right. Like don't put a bracket out there. Don't, don't SEO bracket and not have a bracket. That's the worst. NCAA.com looking at you, Chief. All right? Like, don't. <laughs> Don't fucking do that. Google punish them in SEO. Punish them. Uh, let me uh, let me pull up our uh, Midtown Brewing Company couch in the Rube uh, men's bracket. Um, I need to check out my. I'm a little worried. Uh, so on Michigan State, it's probably UConn then on that side. And hey, if you get there and you take a swing at Utah, UConn and you, you lose, I think everybody at this point would 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 be okay. It's another Final Four loss. Feels like you get there, you got to win one of these. But uh, at this point this year, a Final Four would be pretty incredible. Jake Hawkins, up next, do you think Michigan should reach out to Indiana State's Josh Schertz about their head coaching or their head basketball coach vacancy? You know, he obviously did a really good job there. Um, you know, I, it, it, it knows how to put together a roster, use the portal. Um, I don't know enough about him in terms of, like, is can he take that step up? Can he – is he a good fit? for what they have there as an institution. They've got some challenges and some things to figure out. Next one from the Hawk. If you were able to attend Jonathan Smith's uh, spring football press conference, what question or questions would you have asked him about the MSU football team? I would have said, why isn't why aren't more spring practices fully open? What are you hiding? No, I'm kidding. Um, you know, I, I, I think at this point there's – because he's just learning the team too. It's an, I'm less curious about the – I have fewer questions – uh, that are specific more than what he's learning, and I'd want specific answers. If you know what he's, you know, and that's what it's hard to get, like because they're just seeing their team for the first time in a lot of ways, and so I think observing and, and getting his take on the things he's learning about them, where their strengths are, uh, where he thinks they have some advantages, what he'd like to do. I think those are all things uh, I'd like to know. Upper deck jerk guy. If Holloman could have hit Carr in those two alley oops, would the Spartans have won by thirty? <laughs> Would have it certainly would have uh, changed. There would have been moments of momentum, and, and there was one that led to a three the other way, right? So it was a it was like a five point swing at a pretty crucial point. So it, it is possible it would have gone uh, would have gone even higher up the, uh, the 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 margin would have gone higher. Next from the jerk, uh, will the show pay for Jason's travel if the Spartans make the final four? So we are the show. So yeah, we, we just decide to, to to use some of our, our earnings for Jason's travels. The question mm. I'm going to tell you right now: I don't think it would be worth it for the show. Uh, not because I don't think Jason would be fun to hang with the Final Four. I'm just saying for the best show quality we do, it's when we're both in studio. It's when Jason's also able to hit the drops and and not and yell off and and also control the board. But it's when I'm there too. I mean, it, it's like I like being on the road. I'm having a good time. I, I'm glad that Spotlight gives us this remote studio to do this show and, and have the equipment and do it at a, at a high level. But uh, the best shows are when we're in studio, the best shows for us to give you. 
Uh, and last from the jerk guy, can you get Joe Rexroad on the show to tell us what time the Spartans play on Saturday? <laughs> this came out before it. That's an old joke. Joe hates it. Absolutely hates it because people, when he was at MSU, people used to immediately just start tweeting at him and, and asking long before the uh, the times came out. So glad it's 5.30 tonight. Um, hope you enjoy the game. Get your pure options loaded up. Get your groovy donuts loaded up. Uh, get yourself wrapped in a muskox flannel. Get your bets in on the Firekeepers Eye Casino and Sportsbook app. We appreciate all of them. Uh, we appreciate you producing our show. I uh, hope this gives you something to listen to on a Saturday pregame or even postgame, and maybe it'll sound even better uh, then. Um, we'll be back Monday. I'll be back in studio, and uh, we'll do some hot takes. We'll react to all of it. Uh, good show, man. Yeah, man. Couch in the room.